What's up, fellow robotic enthusiasts? My name's Damon. I'm a junior at West Ashley High School, and I'm here to give you an explanation on how to either increase or decrease your robot's speed or torque by altering its gear ratios. Now, before we get going, let's briefly touch up on what speed and torque is. Then we can go more in depth later on in time. Speed is the rate at which something is able to move or operate. And torque is the force behind objects of rotational motion. Now, this video won't cover the contents inside of a motor. That will be covered in another video. What we'll be working with are gears exterior to the motor on the axles. And we will be dealing with VEX products like VEX motors, gears, shafts, wheels, C channels, some sheet metal a VEX Cortex, a VEX battery pack, bearing blocks, some screws, and caps nuts, all inside of a robot that will demonstrate the differences each gear ratio setting has to speed and torque. So let's get on with the video. Here are some possible scenarios I'll cover today. These all run for 10 seconds. As you may notice, the same robot goes different distances when it runs with the same amount of seconds. It obviously goes different speeds, but why? The reason for this is because it's equipped with different gear ratios. Now before we get too deep, let me explain what I mean by gear ratio. When you connect a gear to another gear that has the same number of teeth, we call that a one to one gear ratio. A gear ratio is the proportion of teeth a gear has to another touching gear. The way you calculate this is by taking the number of teeth the driven gear has, which is the name of the gear coming from the motor, and divide it by the driver gear, the gear connected to the wheel. And then you'll get your gear train's gear ratio. Remember, the driven gear will always act as the numerator. Now you can remember this pretty easy because they both have the letter N. Let's look at our first scenario. This is known as a one-to-one -one gear ratio. Now I know what you're thinking. Hey Damon, all those gears are not identical. How is that a one-to-one -one gear ratio? Well, let's start with the first gear. This driven gear is a 12-tooth gear connected to a 60-tooth gear. But that's not where it ends. In this situation, the 60-tooth gear is known as an idle gear because it's meshed with another 12-tooth driver gear. To find the gear ratio we have to first divide the 12 teeth by the 60 teeth and then divide the 60 teeth by the other 12 teeth. You combine the two ratios which will eventually form a one-to-one -one gear ratio. Here's our second scenario. This robot has a five-to-one gear ratio known as a torque increased gear line. If we break this down you can see there's only two gears the driven and the driver. These gears are a 12 tooth and a 60 tooth gear. These two gears combine to form a five to one gear ratio, which means it'll decrease in speed, but increase in torque. We'll get into speed and torque values later. Basically, this robot moves slower, but it has the potential to carry more weight. The reason this gear ratio increases torque is because the teeth in the 12 tooth gear turns at the same rate as the teeth in the 60 tooth gear, but since there are more teeth to rotate in the 60 tooth gear, its axle will spin slower than the 12 tooth gear. The decrease in speed will cause an increase in torque, which like I said will be further expanded on later on. Now here's our third and final scenario, and it's probably the more interesting of the bunch. As you can notice, it goes way faster than the others. That's because this is a 5 to 1 gear ratio, or a speed increased line of gears. This robot has a 60 tooth driven gear and a 12 tooth driver gear. This makes for a 1 to 5 gear ratio. It goes faster, but it can't handle as much weight as the others. So now that we've covered the applications you can use these gear variations in, you're probably wondering how I keep referring to speed from torque and vice versa. Speed and torque are the inverse to each other. 
The amount of speed you take away from a gear train is the exact same amount of torque that will be given in return. And if you added speed to a gear line, it would lose out on the proportionate amount of torque. We can use this truck and wall here to show the differences between speed and torque. Speed would be the variable at which the truck would get to the wall, but torque would be the variable that would give the truck the ability to punch through the wall. If we use the smaller sports car instead of our truck, the car having higher speed but less torque would get to the wall faster, but it wouldn't be able to go through it. Sometimes you can go without having as much torque and be able to use more speed, like increasing the speed to your wheels if you're in a scenario where you need to move fast, or the rotors of an airplane taking off because they need to go super fast to generate thrust. And there are sometimes your motors need to put out more work without speed as a necessity, like a crane that has to lift 80 tons of cargo. The uses for the variety of gear ratio options are virtually limitless. It all depends on how far you're willing to go to make a certain task easier, because in the end, that's what it's all about. That's a wrap, guys. I hope you learned something new today. Be sure to check out our other videos, and this is Damon reporting out.